Hey guys, how's it going? This is William so here with WA Films. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna be breaking down a cinematic car sequence that I recently posted. I'm gonna actually walk you through the whole process that I had to go into in order to get the final results that you guys already saw in my previous uh, post. I'm gonna talk about cameras, lighting, and every single piece of equipment that I used uh, to actually shoot this entire uh, commercial long story short uh, i was actually thinking uh, and i was planning to shoot this entire uh, commercial uh, with a couple friends uh, you know down from boston but unfortunately you know it, it didn't work out at the end because of the locations and also i was uh, considering to shoot um, during summertime you know i realized that it was gonna be really difficult for me especially because uh, you know after weddings i was gonna be you know really busy so i just uh, decided to you know what i'm gonna do this by myself i knew it was gonna be a little more difficult it was gonna be a little more challenging but uh, you know i just decided to do it and that's exactly what i'm gonna be showing you guys today so let's dive in uh, so first thing first you actually had to plan for it. Um, one of the most difficult parts throughout the whole process, uh, I can tell you right now, it was uh, choosing the right location. You know, uh, because when, when it comes to this type of projects, you actually had to, to go and scout the location. You had to visit the location uh, multiple times. You gotta pick the right time of the day. It's a lot of stuff going on you know when it comes to choosing the right uh location i remember that i first visit uh this uh, spot that you guys are seeing over here i really liked uh, the roads um you know everything the exceny look but at the end you know i decided to just go with a different location uh, because this location specifically it was really far away so i just didn't want it to just go back and forth um it was gonna be you know really tedious for me so i just wanted to find um something uh, closer to where i live and uh um I decided to go with a different location that I'm going to tell you the story later on. Just so you know, I was looking for a more uh, cinematic look, as always. Uh, I was not trying to go for that uh, typical uh, commercial look. Uh, I wanted this to be more like a, a, like a sequence, like a cinematic, moody, and really dark a, a, a feeling. Uh, and that was kind of like what I was looking for. So when you're going for a mood like this for a project, you know, you got to make sure to choose the right time of the day, whether it's going to be, you know, during sunset time, is it going to be during sunrise, is it going to be during daylight, you know, during the night, how, you know, what's the mood, what's the vibe at the video that you want to project. And also depending on the product as well, you also had to think about uh, on the what situations uh, your product is gonna look better uh, you know does it look better uh, during the night does it look better during the day so you know all that kind of stuff all that information it is a uh, really helpful uh, believe it or not that is something that is key during the process uh, filming. Uh, I, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to do something more uh, moody. I knew for a fact that the lighting was going to be amazing. I wanted to have that contract, uh, you know, that you get from sunset shots uh, and the reflections that you can get, you know, with the lighting at that time. It's, it's amazing, you know, with the color of the car. So all that kind of stuff really helps me um, to get, you know, to set you know what was gonna be the time that i wanted to shoot uh so i decided to go with sunset time um you know that was actually part of the plan when you are doing projects like that you have to actually think about all those details because at the end that's gonna make a difference so with that being said you know this is something that you may not want to shoot in just one day um you know, I mean, if you are capable to do this uh, entire shoot in just one day, you know, that's great. You can, you know, uh, save a lot of time. Uh, I found this, I was uh, driving and I saw this uh, empty street uh, really close to where I live. And uh, 
Uh, it was a specific during uh, su sunset time. I decided to just stop, take my camera out. I parked the car and I started, you know, just getting a few shots, just testing the lighting. Believe it or not, uh, I ended up choosing this location for the film. I was just uh, basically filming, you know, in the middle of the road. Uh, and this was literally, literally like four minutes away from my house so it was really really convenient when you are shooting a video like this that involve uh you know tracking cars uh, moving uh, and stuff like that you either have to shoot from the passenger's uh, window you know holding the camera uh, which is okay which is normal you know a lot of people do that um or you can also shoot from the truck of the car uh, which is a little dangerous but i know a lot of people do it that way so either way is you know perfectly fine i started researching you know for a camera a car mount uh, i really wanted to use a mount to attach my camera to it and uh, and be able to actually get a little uh and be a little more flexible uh with the shots uh so i just wanted to try something different i, I didn't want it you know to put myself in the back of the truck you know some of those setups uh they are either uh too big or too expensive I mean, if you are in this industry, uh, if that's the type of projects that you guys do, if you guys do a lot of car commercials, you know, a lot of this uh, kind of stuff, you know, you know, that's okay. It might be worth the investment, you know, for something like that, uh, which is, you know, amazing. Uh, it is really uh, smooth, but uh, if I just do them, you know, this, you know, once in a while, you know, uh, you don't have to to go with uh, something, you know, that expensive. Uh, you know, you might have to look into different solutions, different other options. So I was looking for this online, and I found this company. Uh, they have this a uh, setup which is called a cam 3 g51 which is basically a car mount um when, when it comes to car mounts uh, trust me guys you're gonna find so many so many different options out there so let me show you real quick how i set this up and this is basically what you get for this thing is really flexible you, you know you are able to use different arms like as you guys can see over here it's really convenient really portable as well uh most importantly this is very secure very very safe um i attached this uh, to my car and i didn't have any issues at all now here's the thing the running is comes in very handy because it allows you to control it you know from your phone by using an app you are able to monitor and viewing you know your shot but also you know a it gives you you know the freedom that you need to actually control uh, so let me show you guys real quick how you guys can set this up it is very uh, straightforward so this ribbon you guys are seeing over here it goes uh, on the next of your running it has it has a spot right there and it goes in as you guys can see now um it has it comes with this uh micro uh hdmi cable and now this hdmi cable it goes into you know the hdmi portal you just have to choose another a uh, usb c cable when you purchase the running s2 it comes with so many of those cables so you should be fine uh you're gonna use this one and on the other side of the raven you're gonna see the portal right there so it comes with a password down here i'm just gonna go to the app um i'm gonna choose the dji running you guys can see here and uh, i'm gonna connect it uh, down there you're gonna see connect to raven uh, and also you're gonna go back to the wi-fi you know you just have to type in this password uh, and choose the Ravenade uh, Wi-Fi, uh, and um, by doing that, it's gonna automatically connect. Now let's go back to the app, and as you guys can see here, it's gonna start. Uh, we just had to turn on the camera. 
uh, so a couple things that you need to keep in mind when you control in front of your phone it's gonna be you know you can choose between uh, speed and smoothness so you have to choose you know how uh, fast or how slow you want uh, every access to move and um, and smoothness is gonna be the same thing you're gonna choose how smooth you want every access to move um, something really important is gonna be the enable force mobile I'm gonna show you in a bit what that means but as of right now uh, you have to um, come over here one more time um, you gonna you have to activate virtual joystick and when you do that you're gonna be able to uh, enable it so you're gonna see this a uh, thing over here and um, with this thing you're gonna be able to actually move the camera wherever you want is just think about it like a joystick you know regular joystick uh, it's the same thing uh, you guys can see I'm controlling right now the camera from uh, from my phone create so many different movement with this uh, now uh, another option is if you come over here and uh, you uh, if you enable Fox uh, mobile so what this that is wherever the phones move you can see how fast the response is it's amazing so um this was actually one of the options that i used uh, for the for some of the shots um of the video and same thing if you want to present it, you just have to press this one over here uh, as far as the cameras i was always shooting with the canon r5 um i shot pretty much everything in 60 frames just just to just to have that freedom you know in post just to be able to speed up or slow down some of the footage um so everything was shot a uh, 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 with the r5 and with the canon rf uh, 28 to 70 2.0 that was the lens that i basically used for all the shots um, don't ask me who was driving but uh i actually had to do at some point i had to actually drive and control the camera at the same time so it was really really tough so that's that's why i'm telling you that i had to do this by myself at the beginning of this shoot i wanted to actually go to uh, one of the car studios um, down in new jersey um, but unfortunately because of covid you know they were closed so i was not able to actually book a you know a date uh, for this shoot to bring the car to, to the studio uh, so i had to actually shoot everything uh, as far as the interior shots as far as the detail shots i had to actually do everything uh, in my garage and you know a couple things to keep in mind when you're shooting something like this uh you know a, 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 in a garage in a space like this uh like i mentioned before it's gonna be a little challenging for you so there's a couple things that i want to share with you guys you know for obvious reasons you know i was only able to get just one angle of the car um you know i i was not able to actually place the car in a specific position that i wanted obviously i was not able to actually move the car uh, as much as i wanted so i had to actually stick to one angle uh, for this specific shot i had to shoot with the 40 millimeter canon 40 millimeter 2.8 uh, that's one of my favorite lenses so far from canon uh, so with this lens i was able to actually have a full view of the car a gray frame uh, which is uh, what i was looking for now you guys can see here shooting with this lens uh, since there is really really a wide angle lens then uh, you know it, it takes a lot from uh, from the space and i put this paper on top in front of the lens just to cover the part of the ceiling that it was uh, that it was uh, showing in the frame so with this paper um you know i was able to actually dark you know that ceiling and, and since the garage it is a uh, dark you know it, it really it really worked out we, we couldn't remove this in post but i just didn't want it to do that i wanted to save you know a little time and doing this actually in camera the second thing that i was going to mention is uh as you guys can see i was shooting during the day 
um, and there was a lot of light coming in from the uh, you know from the windows of the of the door um, so I helped to actually block you know all that lighting that was coming in uh, just to avoid you know reflections and the car uh, I didn't want to you know to have any harsh lighting and you know reflecting uh, uh, on the car you know creating that you know cheesy reflections you know uh, w when you're shooting uh, something like this type of uh, stuff uh, you might want to go with more you know with soft uh, instead of having reflections so pretty much all the lighting that I was using it was bouncing up the ceiling uh, I had to use a lot of lighting for this guys um, you know there was a, a, a black car but at the same time you know it, it, it's not like a, I was shooting in a professional car studio you know when you have those big soft buttons on top of the car and that creates beautiful soft lighting on the, on the car you know so I, I was obviously working very you know limited with the style that I had so um, in order to make it work you know I had to actually use the ceiling I had to bounce all the lighting uh, so I had to actually use a lot a lot of lighting uh, uh, pointing at the ceiling for for this shot specifically you guys can see here for for the tire shot uh, I didn't want it to use like I said before any direct lighting uh, uh, at all so uh, I decided to go with, with a reflector I was I was using this uh, silver side uh, of the reflector um, you know a uh, with this light pointing to the reflector I was basically you know controlling the lighting pointing towards um, the tires so a uh, with this a uh, with this setup i was able to actually get that effect the interior shots uh, i'm using the sub uh you guys can see here this is the goddess sl60w but also on the driver's uh window i, I was able to attach a, a diffuser uh and i have a, a proxy light pointing in through the diffuser just to create you know a more soft um, you know, when I was shooting on the other side, I just switched the diffuser to the other door. Uh, I had the camera on the opposite side of the light, as always, you know, just to create a more dramatic look. Uh, by using this two lighting, I was able to create a, a, a backlight with the sub box, but with the side, with the light that I was placing on the side, I was able to use it as a key light. And like I said before, with this, you get that beautiful ring of light that you guys can see on some of the details. At some point, with for these details, I'm shooting with the uh, 28 to 70. Pretty much all the details I'm shooting in 70. But at some point, I'm switching to the 70 to 200, you know, just to get more compression. So I, I think I was shooting around 135 or 150. Uh, so with this uh, lens, I was able to get shots with more compression. It, uh, I also got a few macro shots for some of the details. So, you know, when shooting uh, cars, you know, you, you, you had to highlight, you know, a, the, the features that you want to, you know, to use to showcase, you know, your product. Uh, you gotta go, you know, with details, with close-ups, with gotta get a lot of stuff a lot of shots so you are able to actually play around when you are in post as far as the drone shots i was shooting with the phantom 4 pro b2 you know and like i said you know i went to you know different locations trying to find you know the perfect spot for for this shoot um uh, you know a uh, incorporating drone shots for for this type of a uh, a uh, you know car shoots it's gonna be always a, a great option um i wanted to at some point i wanted to do something where uh, i'm switching between different terrains you know like like winter time with the snow uh, i wanted to switch uh, to a more rustic uh, terrain like off-road stuff something like that but like I said, you know, the, you know, I just didn't want it to extend a little more um, the shoot. But um, that was kind of like 
the one of the ideas that I had at the beginning, you know, I wanted to change throughout the video with different uh, uh, settings, with different uh, locations, showing different uh, situations where the car is going to be able to perform. And that's it, guys. That was pretty much everything that I did you know, uh, to get this uh, done. Uh, so let me just show you real quick the final results. Uh, remember guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure to subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see, you know, uh, something specifically. If, if you guys have a, a question, if you guys have anything to say, you know, just comment down below. Be happy to, to get back to you guys. Again, thank you so much uh, for watching. And I see you guys in the next video.